What's up everyone and welcome to another talky video. The topic of today's chat, the Kuva Lich system. The start, the changes and my feelings on the general state of the system as a whole. So sit back, put your feet up and let's talk Warframe. Liches were something that when they were originally shown I was quite excited for. It sounded like a fairly cool system that could add something that a lot of us have been wanting to happen for quite some time. More mini bosses to show up during missions just to break up the gameplay from time to time. I even liked the idea of the key code thing needed to be able to kill them through the Parazon. And the Parazon as a whole was a cool idea, especially having played with cinematic finishes in the Destiny 2 Shadowkeep expansion. But all of that changed when the first lit system actually released, and I'll be honest, the first version of the system was awful. Massively layered in RNG to try and cover up just how lacking in depth the whole system was. The only thing I didn't mind so much was the Requiem Relics to get those mods. It's the same way that any other Relic works and it tied into the Siphon missions uh, and it tied those into them, into the game even more. The initial problem though was that the Akuva Flood was the only one with a guaranteed chance to drop and the others only had 30% chance to drop a Relic. And then it was a 1 in 4 chance of getting the Relic you needed. Then there was a 1 in 6 chance of getting the right reward from the relic from the lich you needed. This meant that due to the low rate that you got the relics, it, it, it was a fairly major issue and did not feel good whatsoever. And then we had the death from the lich, and Steve admitted on the dev stream that this was actually pretty rushed, which honestly it did feel like that when it played originally, and the barely working death animation showed that too. I didn't care too much about the death, personally. Death means basically nothing in Warframe, so it was kind of whatever really, for me at least. The thing I did care about was the unskippable cutscene that failed many missions, while the Lich took its time to level up. Anything with a target to defend, survival if you were low on air for example, mobile defense or uh, a rescue. During that cutscene, at higher Lich levels, you could fail the mission so often if you mistimed your stab. However, while I personally didn't care much about it, I can understand why some people do care and that it felt jarring and weird in a game we've spent so long as this almost unkillable demigod. Murmur farming? I mean, that's something actually I want to talk about a little bit later, but I didn't like it on its release. It got decent when you got credit for other people stabbing their Liches and then that got removed again, and it went back to being long, boring and tedious. More on this a little bit later. Finally, when it comes to thoughts on the original system, the weapons. The weapons themselves actually were alright, reskin stat changes for most part, which is actually alright. Couple of new weapons? This was all fine and something I liked. One lich every three hours though, with a 35% range on the elemental bonus, between 25 and 60%, was horrendous and gave literally no incentive to care about the elemental bonus quite frankly. Then there was the mandatory 5 former on each weapon to get all the mastery. I, I hate all of this 5 former for mastery. On other weapons that need it, like the Paracesis for example, it made sense because the sentient killing potential went up for each former. Kuva weapons? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's literally just for the mastery. It makes literally no sense and doesn't benefit the system whatsoever. I don't understand what the point of adding this was. Despite mastery not really meaning anything, people are always going to chase it for the most part. And there's what, 14 weapons? 14 weapons, each with 5 enforced former for no benefit other than mastery? Yeah, not that impressed with this one at all. If they had some bonus, hell, even if that former boosted the percentage on the weapon past the 60%, it would be worth it, but as it stands, it's grind for grind's sake, and that's all it is. Now, all of this meant that the original system had people in abandoning it in droves. People gave up on this so quickly, which is entirely understandable. So moving on, a couple of months, we got a bunch of changes. So let's look at the system now, and what I think of the changes, and what I think still could be improved. I think it's important just to quickly give my views on the way I thought things were originally as the original system, so you can get my way of thinking before I move on to my ideas for the changes. So the changes that have been made, the death, death animation, that's gone. It's amazing. It makes the gameplay flow so much nicer. I'm happy with this. It's opened up more mission types to being viable, 
because you no longer fail it due to the Lich's level up animation. Relics now have a chance of dropping from thralls when you stab them with your Parazon, which again, really, really cool. It means that you can passively build up a stash of relics while killing liches, so that when it comes time for your mod to break, you'll have more than likely have, you know, a bunch of relics ready to go and actually run another one. Also, amazing. It does lead on to something I consider to be another problem, which actually does tie into murmur farming, so we'll talk about that in a bit. Weapons are all relevant now, which is amazing. Even if it's a 40% impact weapon, you can take your formed up weapon, fuse the unformed one into it to boost the percentage, and even though it's going to flip it to impact, once you get enough weapons to boost it to 60%, you can just flip it back to whatever element you want to have a maxed out weapon in the element you want it to be. This is really nice and means that any weapon that you get while you're ephemera hunting is still useful and can be used to boost your already formed up weapons. That feeling that your time is wasted when you get a crap weapon in the old system, which was basically an instant convert for the Lich, that feeling is gone. Loveling showing the weapon that the Lich will spawn with as well, amazing. If I'm focusing on boosting one specific weapon, the leveling showing the weapon means I can ignore weapon types I don't want. Being able to focus your time, focus your grind into the weapons that you actually want is super, super nice. So it's all sounding pretty damn perfect so far, right? Well, honestly, the system, in my opinion, is damn near perfect, aside from two things. Firstly is murmur farming, and second is the actual lich itself. So let's start with the murmur farming, and this is where the changes to the Requiem relics sort of come in as well. Like my complaints about Railjack, once again, you do lich missions to do lich missions, and that's realistically it. It's not quite as closed loop as Railjack is, but it isn't far off. The whole thing about murmur farming right now is it just feels ridiculously boring. It's not like these missions are new or different. It's the ex same exterminate, same rescue, same capture, or whatever we've been doing for the last five years, with one new enemy that we get to stab once in a while. It probably would have been better to make the relics guaranteed from the siphon missions, and that you get a radiant from the flood, rather than making it all drop inside the lich mission, so you don't feel like you need to go outside of the lich system anymore. But this is part of the reason it doesn't, like, that it feels so slow and so boring to kill a lich. And this is something that I've heard a lot, that while people enjoy the changes, the murmur farming is what's killing it for them. There's two ways I feel that could actually improve this, to be honest. Either tie it into the game better, so that you can do what you want in-game without specifically launching a lich mission. For example, relic cracking, hell, even sorties or whatever. This means that you can work on whatever you actually need to do in the game without going, right, I'm doing liches, and literally only liches. Liches are designed as a more end gamey system. However, it does show the problem that realistically, end of reward missions suck so hard. Mission rewards on their own are not an incentive and are not rewarding enough to make you feel like you're making any progress in the rest of the game. So either the liches need to be more integrated into the game, or bring back the progress from other people stabbing their lich. I know lore-wise, makes literally no sense. However, in all honesty, this was the one thing actually, like, people felt good about murmur farming, and it promoted playing in groups rather than solo. It is a more simple change, and it felt good because it sped up how fast you killed your lich. Personally, I don't think the time to kill a lich, two to three hours, isn't terrible. However, the lack of being integrated into the rest of the game is what's making that feel so bad and so slow. However, I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Now, the second major problem with the lich system, as far as I'm concerned, is maybe not something that most people will notice. However, it's the fact that the lich weakness thing is actually almost completely irrelevant. In fact, the only relevant thing is just being corrosive immune. There's a major reason for that. Liches are just Grenier underneath, which means cloned flesh and ferrite armor. Yep, the Lich does have ferrite armor. Now this means that the resistances and weaknesses of the ferrite armor are applied on top of the Lich, like on top of the Lich system, as well as the damage reduction that ferrite armor brings. 
So what this ends up meaning is that your damage gets affected by armor in the same way as on a standard Grenier, where basically any damage apart from corrosive is going to suffer more from the damage reduction caused by armor than any weakness on your Lich can compensate for. And this is on an enemy that is immune to any form of armor stripping, be that from abilities, procs, cavat, or shattering impact. So what this ends up meaning is that no matter what your Lich says for weaknesses, the correct answer is always to mod for corrosive. This is the reason that corrosive immune ones, they feel so bloody awful to kill. It's because you're no longer able to mod the correct damage type to combat the armor underneath and as such are suffering that massively reduced damage. And this ends up meaning a system that could have been cool, and promoting modding around the actual weakness of your liches is completely and utterly irrelevant, because you just need to mod for corrosive damage unless your lich is immune to it, and honestly, if that happens, that sucks. And yeah, a system that could have been really, really cool, but because of this, uh, it just isn't. Now one further change I'd love to see is the introduction of some bad luck protection around the ephemeras. I know people that have literally no luck with ephemeras ever, like even since the increase of their drop rate. I would love to see you get a radiation token from a radiation lich that you can trade in with steel meridian for the ephemera. Say for example 10 radiation tokens for the ephemera. Which means that you still get 10 tries to get it, but on the 10th if you're still unlucky you can just buy it. I do think that Warframe needs more bad, like, uh, bad luck protection like this, and I think it could be an interesting place to try it out and see how it goes. So that's my thoughts on the current Lich system. I do think it is so close to being a damn good system and one that I would enjoy. The murmur farming is the least enjoyable part of the system right now, and while I don't mind grind, the grind does at least to be kind of interesting and fun and at least a bit rewarding. Which at the moment, murmur farming just isn't any of those, and it's still by far the most common complaint about the system. One of the things I would love to see in Warframe as a whole, starting to tie all of the many systems we have in the game together to make a cohesive game and a cohesive universe rather than a series of random kind of connected systems. And I will have a video on that in the future. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really, really look forward to listening to your comments or reading your comments in the comments below. The ones on the Railjack video were amazing and I can't say I'm, in surpri I'm surprised by a lot of those comments, but it is fantastic to read them all. Once again, I'll be reading the comments and trying to reply as much as I can here. I hope you have a fantastic evening and I shall catch you in the next one.